Hello and welcome to another Paratus video. My name is Gideon. This is going to be a little bit of a rant because it's something that I feel I really need to get off my chest, especially after this uh, long weekend. Every single person that has committed suicide due to the consequences of lockdown, due to lockdown, due to what lockdown has done to them, that has lost hope in the future, that has lost their livelihoods, their business, their families, their relationships. All these people that were driven to the brink saw no way out and resorted to taking their own lives because of it, as a result of it. Those people didn't commit suicide. They were murdered. They were murdered by the ANC government. They were murdered by the ANC government's policies, by their politics, by their devotion to Marxism and socialism and tyranny and totalitarianism, their devotion to stubbornly ignoring science, reality, economics. These people aren't suicide victims. They are murder victims. And if we want to remember them for, for what was done to them, I think it's important that we get the context correct. It segueing off that into entirely different, well, similar yet different side of the debate. You know, it's this concept that people go, okay, uh, lockdown has exposed how our sick Western culture of consumerism or obsessive consumerism, our entire economy was was built on on terrible bad foundations. That if certain segments are shut down for just a few months, how everything comes tumbling down and crashing in around our ears, which is complete and utter nonsense. Sure, okay, nobody needs alcohol, nobody needs cigarettes. You don't need a, a new pair of shoes, you don't need a new pair of jeans, you don't need to go out for dinner or a movie, you don't need a rotisserie chicken, you don't even need a haircut, you don't need to go anywhere as a tourist or travel anywhere in the country for, for leisure. You need none of these things to satisfy the most basic bottom hierarchy of survival needs in the in the bigger pyramid, okay? But ultimately, we have built humongous industries, meaningfully employing millions of people, allowing them to meaningfully in turn provide for their families and for their children. Based on the foundation of these goods and services, these economic activities. So sure, even though you might not need all these things just to survive. I mean, if life is only about surviving to you, good luck. You're not really fucking living. But a great many people don't only want these things, but it's clear that they need them. Otherwise, these industries wouldn't exist. This just goes to show the folly and the fallacy of thinking this entire complex organism that is the economy, whether it's the national one or the world one, you can shut it all down and then restart certain organs and think the entire thing is going to be okay and not, not collapse in on itself because you think from your ivory tower pontificating down that, yeah, people don't really need a new iPhone. People really don't need um, fancy design or anything. We can just shut those things down because they're not essential and... Um, the fact that everything comes crashing down because we shut those down proves how sick the economy is. Fuck you. Who do you think you are to decide what people need and don't need? Who died and made you class captain or the only adult in the room? These industries are incredibly meaningful and I keep coming back to alcohol as an example, but you can use tobacco products as well. Okay. Alcohol is about more than just drinking alcohol. It's about glass makers providing the receptacle in which the alcohol is stored and transported and consumed from, label makers, entire logistics companies and logistic networks, including warehouses, warehousing staff, um, the entire restaurant industry, the entertainment industry is built uh, to a large degree off the proceeds of selling alcohol to consumers. Whether or not it's responsibly or irresponsibly consumed is not the debate here. It's the fact that you shut that industry down, you destroy millions of livelihoods. The fact that SAB has canned, what, five, mil, 5 billion rand in investment now on an expansion project which isn't happening. The fact that Heineken has canned 6 billion and idiots are celebrating this. I mean, talk about, you know, people tell me I'm fucking heartless, but I'm sorry, you really don't have a clue. This again indicates ANC hasn't met a policy, a terrible policy it didn't love. We have a central government obsessed with central control over all aspects of life, with its education, what you consume, what you read, what you're allowed to publish on the internet. 
uh, as we now see with their obsession with trying to get the film publication board or whatever the hell the acronym is to vet everything that goes online, probably including this video because it needs to be rated. Um, it's an obsession with centralized control about everything. And people keep falling for the fact that you can negotiate with an organization that wants to take your rights away from you. Guess what? If you're negotiating with someone who wants to steal from you, you're negotiating about how much you think they should steal and how much they think they should be allowed to steal. You're still getting stolen from. Your rights are still being eroded. Your rights are still being eliminated. You are still losing. You will never win. Stop negotiating with communists. Stop negotiating with socialists. Stop negotiating with tyrants who are trying to take from you what is not theirs to take in the first place. That's the first step. If we want to survive this crisis with any sort of meaningful, I don't know, resemblance to a civilization, we need to stop negotiating with these bastards and we need to start making our communities resilient. We have to rely and we are going to have to rely on each other. And fortunately, in a dynamic free economy, reliance on others, on each other, is part of how an economy functions. Not out of necessarily, how shall we put it, charity, but out of necessity. Because someone else has something that you want and you're willing to barter and trade for it. And because you in turn have something they would like. The entire process is lubricated through money because money is accepted as a medium of exchange everywhere. So I don't need to exchange my pumpkins for your shoes to give Peter shoes for the education he gives my child. That's the summary. Don't negotiate with communists. Don't negotiate with people who want to take from you that which is not theirs to take, which are your rights. Stop trying to rationalize lockdown as any, in any way, sense or form being good. If you in the very beginning believed it was good, I can almost, almost forgive you. I don't know where you've been living and how you haven't been paying attention to what the ANC has been doing for 26 years. But sure, you know, we can write that one, chalk that one up to being naive if you've since come around. Congratulations. Welcome to our side of the fence. Make your communities resilient. Support each other. Fight communism. Support small business. On that note, this is where the plug comes in. This cap, this hoodie, the hoodie going for sale soon next week. They're slightly snug, so go one size up if you order. If you're a large, order an extra large. If you're an extra large, order a 2XL because uh, this is a medium and it fits me nicely, but I'm not a very big man. Um, thank you for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Speak to you soon. Cheers. Yeah.